It's a long way from my father's backyard drink on Palmer Street in Fredericton to a junior hockey career in Peterborough with the Peets, then to a hockey scholarship at Rensselaer Polytechnical Institute, affectionately known as RPI, located in Troy, New York, and on to a long stint with the Montreal Canadiens coaching and their scouting staff. But that's the path taken by Richard Scammell, who led RPI in scoring twice between 1965 and 69, went on to the Clinton Comets of the East Coast Hockey League for two years before his career was ended by injury at a Montreal Canadiens training camp when he was 26 years old. But why not try scouting with those very same Montreal Canadiens? And Richard did that for a mere 28 years. 79 of his scouted players made it to the National Hockey League, and that helped translate into six Stanley Cups during his time with the classiest franchise in the NHL. He also refereed Division I and III hockey for nine years. He's an honored member of three hockey halls of fame in upstate New York, including his beloved RPI. But his hockey legacy is arguably his establishment of the girls' hockey program in New York State which started with the Troy Albany Ice Cats in 1993, a team which won five state championships and has been to two national tournaments and has since sent 65 young women to hockey programs with NCAA and club level teams. And his career has now come full circle with his fourth Hall of Fame appearance, this time in his hometown. Richard Scammell, inducted onto the Fredericton Sports Wall of Fame, May 3rd, 102 years old, and I'll tell her all about the ceremonies tomorrow. Uh, I also want to congratulate the other uh, inductees tonight. Uh, Kathy, what you've accomplished in golf is amazing, and very few people would even try to do what you did. Uh, I watched Bill Hughes play at the York Arena. I think I even played a couple of games with him, I think, when I was home at Christmas once with the Cavs. So. And he was one of the leaders in all those Cavs teams. And Wayne, uh, your winning ways in cross-country running in high school, UNB, and at the master's level is remarkable. And I'm not sure who's representing the softball teams. Is it Sonny? I had a different name first, but in the early 80s, there were a lot of good softball players in Frederick because I used to watch them at the square. Um, and Everybody should be proud of all the inductees tonight. I think they're a very good example of what the people in Fredericton are and can be. Um, I was born in Fredericton, and I lived here until I was 16 years old. This is where I got my start, and these years served as a sound basis for what I've done with my life. Um, we all thought we were great hockey players when we were growing up, but we really didn't have anything, anything to compare ourselves to. 
Uh, you have to remember that growing up in the 50s and 60s was a very different time compared to today. Uh, today, you can get an answer to anything from the internet. You know what's going on in sports with a click of a mouse. But growing up as a player in my early years in Fredericton basically consisted of games at the York Arena or the Lord Beaver Brook Rink. We all made trips to other parts of the Maritimes during the playoffs, but the rest of the country was basically unknown to most of us. Uh, Fredericton was fortunate to have Roley McClanahan, and he made sure that some of us had an opportunity to play at a different level. Uh, in the spring of 1963, Roley bought Scotty Bowman to watch me play at a game at the York Arena. At the time, Scotty was the Atlantic Canada scout for the Montreal Canadiens, and I really think that might have been before Scotty was Scotty Bowman because uh, we all know what he became and the success he uh, achieved as a coach and general manager. Uh, Roley and Scotty came to our house on Hanson Street. Uh, they told me they would take me to play in Peterborough the following season. And that all sounded great, but I didn't even know where Peterborough was. <laughs> but I knew Danny was there, so I knew it had to be okay. So <laughs> away we went. Um, when I think of it, this is probably the most one of the most important periods of my life. Uh, my father had passed away when I was 14, and I had some serious growing up to do when I was 16 since I was leaving home for the first time. Uh, times were challenging for two years in Peterborough, and though I didn't realize it, I became a much better player and a stronger person. I was pretty much on my own, and I had to figure out how to survive. Uh, one of the positive things that happened to me uh, is that I met my wife Denise there, and here we are together almost 51 years later. <laughs> was it? Scott McKenzie told me I had to mention my wife for having in real trouble. <laughs> uh, after two years in Peterborough, I had to decide what I wanted to do. I was finished with high school, and I was being recruited by an American college to play in hockey in Troy, New York. I decided to go to RPI on a hockey scholarship, and for me, it was a very good decision. Uh, I've been at RPI since 1965. I've had a successful hockey career at RPI, and I'm still working there. And my hockey also led me back to Montreal. Uh, as Dave said, I was able to scout for Montreal for 28 years, and during the 70s, the Montreal Canadiens, I thought, were the best franchise in all sports. Uh, uh, they had great teams, and they won. They regularly won the Stanley Cup. And my daughters were growing up during this period, and they got to experience Stanley Cup celebrations, and they met their fa favorite hockey players. My oldest daughter, Lisa, met Chris Chelios. Heather, my middle daughter, met Matt Snazlin and Todd Sparks. And Jennifer, my youngest daughter, met Patrick Roy. And I almost forgot, my wife got to meet and talk to her favorite hockey players several times. And it wasn't me. <laughs> it was John Bellow. Oh. John is a very special person, so I can see why she'd be excited to talk to him. <laughs> uh, the next important phase of my life involved girls hockey. Uh, in 1993, my youngest daughters, two of my youngest daughters, were playing house league hockey with boys. And as you know, at a certain point, the boys are bigger and stronger, and they, you know. They start throwing their weight around, so I had to, I figured, you know, I was going to start a girls team to get them away from the body check. So that was the start of the Troy Albany Ice Caps girls hockey program. And I'd like to say our program has been very successful over the years. It's been very rewarding for me to watch many of these girls, including two of my daughters, uh, grow up and go on to play college hockey. And we now have four Ice Caps teams for the upcoming season. And I'm 67, and I thought I reached the point in my life where I started to think about doing less and having more free time. But that's not going to happen anytime soon. I now have three grandchildren playing hockey, and as you probably know, the expectation is to have Grammy and Grampy watch all their games. Uh, one of my granddaughters will actually be playing on the youngest Ice Cats teams next year, and I think that's really neat. She's supposed to be following in her mother's footsteps. And in closing, I would just like to say this is a great honor for me to be recognized by my hometown and Frederick Sports Investments. 
Fredericton and my friends here continue to be an important part of my life. My children understand the importance of coming home, and they're very aware of what this city means to our family. Thank you again for inducting me into the Sports Wall Hall of Fame tonight. This means a lot to me and my family.